What's up guys, welcome to the RA Visuals YouTube channel. Today we are continuing our how to build a PC step-by-step -step series, and if you missed the last video, well, it was actually the first video in this series because it was, you know what, it doesn't matter. If you missed the last video I made on how to stall your CPU, you can check that out right here. In this video, we are moving on to the next step in the PC building process, which is installing our RAM. Yes, I know you probably think installing RAM is super easy, and honestly it really is, but there are a few things to look out for when doing this, and I'm here to make sure that you go into it with the knowledge and the confidence you need to do it right. Well, right after I tell you about today's video sponsor, VIP URCD Key. Are you tired of that annoying Windows activation watermark on your desktop? VIP URCD Key has you covered with fully licensed codes to activate your favorite games and software. Purchasing your key is super easy. All you have to do is click on the item that you want, click buy to add it to your cart. Once in your cart, you can now enter my promo code RAV20. After adding the promo code, you'll see your savings pop up and you can then purchase your product with your chosen payment method. Finding and entering your Windows 10 CD key is super easy. All you have to do is go over to your user profile, find your purchase and click view keys and codes to reveal your new CD key. Then all you have to do is go to settings in Windows, click on update and security, click on activation, and finally click on change product key and paste your new key into the window and click next. You'll now have a fully licensed version of Windows 10 with no watermark. Check the links in the description to start saving now. All right, before we start taking things out and shoving them into slots. <gasps> That's what she said. Let me drop some knowledge on you guys really quick. So what is RAM? RAM stands for Random Access Memory. Your system uses RAM to store working parts of the operating system temporarily and the data your applications are using actively like right now. So effectively, the more RAM you have, the more things you can have quick access to at any one time. For the most part, RAM comes in two sizes. DIMM, which stands for Dual Inline Memory Module, which is found in desktops and servers, and SODIMM, which stands for Small Outline DIMM, which is found in like laptops and small form factor builds. Today, we'll be focusing on the desktop size RAM since we'll be building a desktop size computer. So you're on Amazon and you're shopping for a RAM kit. Generally, there'll be four things that you'll see in the product listing. The RAM type, the capacity, the configuration, and the clock speed. So let's go ahead and talk about those things really fast. So in shopping for RAM, you might see it labeled with something that looks like DDR3, DDR4, DDR5, etc. And this has to do with the generation of RAM that it is and the generation of motherboard that the RAM is compatible with. Make sure you know ahead of time if your motherboard supports DDR3, DDR4, or DDR5 memory so you can choose the correct RAM for your system. Now there are older generations like DDR and DDR2 as well, but I'm sure most of you guys are at least using DDR3 in your system these days, so that's what we're gonna be focusing on. RAM comes in a bunch of different configurations, but the most common in my opinion these days is probably something like the two x eight kit, which consists of two eight gigabyte sticks totaling 16 gigabytes of RAM. 16 gigs is the new recommended amount for a gaming PC these days, but depending on the games you play and the other tasks you do with your system, you may be able to get by with less or even more if you require it. You need to choose the capacity and configuration that is best suited to your needs and what your motherboard will actually support. And I'll talk more about this when we get to actually installing the RAM into our motherboard. Another important item to look out for when choosing RAM is the clock speed. For example, a super popular type of DDR3 RAM is DDR3 1600 megahertz. That means it operates at 1600 mega transfers per second. Alternatively, the new DDR5 RAM that's out in the market right now can be up to speeds of like 6400 megahertz, which operates at 6400 mega transfers per second. So much faster. Choosing the speed that you'll need will really come down to pricing and whether your system will see any benefit from the faster speeds or not. AMD builds actually benefit more from faster RAM these days as they have something called the Infinity Fabric, which benefits greatly from faster RAM in terms of raw FPS in your games. So if you're planning on doing an AMD gaming build, it's best to go with the fastest RAM that you can afford. All right, now that we have a bit of knowledge in our brains about RAM and what it does, let's install some in our system. Okay, installing our RAM. So now to get this started, we need a couple of things here. Now we already got our you know motherboard uh, assembly from the last video our CPU install that we did last time. And then we're gonna need our RAM, which right now for this uh, purposes of this video, we have two sticks right here of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro memory right here. Uh, each, each stick is 16 gigabytes. So this is a 32 gigabyte uh, kit of memory right here. Now, if you guys have you know a two by eight kit, like I discussed earlier in the video, it'll work the exact same way or a two by four kit, doesn't matter, something like that. 
Um, I'm showing you this because it's probably the most common, but I'll, I'll let you guys know in a couple different configurations of what could happen. Um, and the other thing that you're gonna need is your motherboard manual. And now I'm gonna show you why you need that right now. So what I want you to do is go in your manual and flip to the page where it discusses installing your memory. So the reason you want this is because it actually tells you what slots to put your DIMMs in in what configuration as well. So right here, right off of our motherboard manual, you can see if you're using one DIMM, you know you put it in the number two slot. Or if you're using the uh, two configuration like we are, you use uh, slot two and slot four or A and B, which is what they call it. And then of course, if you're gonna populate all four slots, you're going to use all four right there. So this will vary, of course, depending on what motherboard you're using. So if you're using a motherboard that only has two slots, again, check your motherboard manual because it'll tell you what slots to populate if you're only using, or which slot to populate if you're only using one DIMM. Now, with Ryzen builds like this, I highly suggest that you use dual channel memory. So you don't want to ever use just a single stick with a Ryzen build because it will severely hinder your uh, build's performance um, just because of the way that, that that processor and the memory communicates. So you always wanna try to use dual channel because it will utilize that memory speed faster and it will you know, result in higher frame rates in your game. So one other thing I wanted to show you guys before we actually install this memory is that some motherboards actually have a little print on the side of the memory slots and it shows you where you should actually install your memory. So you don't have to open your motherboard manual if you don't want to. Sometimes it's sitting right there for you, right printed on the motherboard to tell you what you should do. So we already know, because we checked our motherboard manual anyway, we already know that we're gonna be populating our second and our fourth slot with these two DIMMs. So what you gotta do is first go ahead and just open the latch right here. Some boards will have a latch on both sides and some boards only have it on one. This board is the kind that only has the latch on one slide. So to get this right, all you guys gotta do is you gotta go ahead and check out your DIMM right here. You see with DDR4 memory, this works for DDR3 as well, but I'll show you a little, a little uh, B-roll of a DDR3 after this just so you guys are aware. Um, you see that one side is longer, one side is shorter, and there's a tick mark in the middle of the memory right there. So on your actual DIMM slots, you can see the longer side is right here, shorter side is right here. So you wanna get it in that configuration and basically just put it right over top of the slot, get it slotted in as evenly as possible, and as you get it in the slot, just put it with two fingers, push down with even pressure, until it clicks. Now this next one, I'm going to just not even talk, I'm gonna do it again so you guys can hear the noise and you guys will know what it sounds like. Right there, so you guys heard those two clicks. That basically means it's fully slotted and it's in the board. And that is really it, you guys, that's all there is to it. So now, as you guys can see in our top-down view, our memory is installed and it's ready to go. So what I'm gonna show you guys right now is if you guys are on a DDR3 system, uh, it's basically the exact same process. The, uh, the sizing and the cutout is exactly the same, pretty much. Um, I think the only difference between DDR3 and DDR4 is the voltages and the number of pins uh, on the bottom. So if you're using a DDR3 motherboard, obviously it'll be compatible and it will work. Um, just make sure you follow that same process I just told you and get it all lined up and push it into the board evenly. Okay, and now since we have DDR5 out there on the market, I'm gonna send it over to my past self and my recent Intel build that I did utilizing DDR5 memory to show you the slight difference that you have when utilizing that type of memory in your build. So actually in terms of installation, DDR5 is exactly the same as DDR3 and DDR4. You just line up the slot on the stick with the slot on the motherboard, push in with equal pressure, and you're good to go. Okay guys, that's it. I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope you now have either already installed your memory or now have the confidence to tackle it when you guys get to it. So if this video helped you out at all, please go ahead and drop a like on it and leave me a comment down below letting me know how it went. Also, if you wanna keep up with this series or any other content I'll be releasing, be sure to get subscribed with those notifications on so you won't miss new videos like our next step in the PC building process which will be installing your CPU cooler. Anyway, I hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll catch you in the next video.